Okay, welcome to the 31st video of the Marine Invertebrate Biology Lecture Series and the first video on phylum chordata, maybe the only video. All right, most chordates are actually like us. They have backbones, they are, uh, they have bones, chordata, but um, we are focused on an invertebrate class, so um, they're vertebrate. Some of our ancestors looked like this, okay? So we're fairly closely related to some of these uh, things that are often called sea snot, no vertebra. Um, they can be uh, very pretty if you look closely, at, um, especially the solitary, uh, large solitary tunicates like this. Um, these bluebell tunicates, which are more colonial, or sorry, aggregated, not colonial. Um, they very delicate little uh, filter feeding structures, and then these ones are colonial. So sometimes they they share a sheath, uh, and you might think they're sponges, but by the end of this lecture, you'll see you'll be able to recognize the pattern that tells you that they're not sponges. They are a different type of thing called a chordate. So sea squirts and salps. That's what we're going to be focused on. No backbone. Uh, but just like you did when you were um, just a tiny little larval tadpole in your mummy's tummy, uh, you have the same four characteristics as all chordates, and these do as well. So let's have a look at that. All right, so there's something called a notochord, okay, flexible rod like structure that forms the main support of the body. So this gives a bit of uh, structure. It gives a point of attachment for muscles. Um, it, it keeps the body stiff enough to do a little bit of protection of the spinal cord, um, but it's sort of like a primitive backbone and all uh, chordates, including the salps and the uh, sea squirts, have a notochord. The second feature of that is shared by chordates is a dorsal hollow nerve cord that is this black area here and some if you remember the platyhelminthes they had paired um, nerves running down the length of the body the, all the chordates have a single nerve from which the brain sends signals and organizes movement and uh, coordinated efforts okay so the and the next thing is gill slits Okay, so you may not realize that you or a baby chicken or lots of other terrestrial things when your first in your first embryonic stages had gill slits um, in the marine invertebrates, these things are retained. And they have a post anal tail. So if you think about most of the other animals, think about that pearl fish swimming in, most of them have the anus right at the very end. But uh, very much like a fish, the um, tail extends out past the anus, which is a feature of chordate. So you don't. This doesn't really look like um, a salp or a uh, sea squirt. Uh, this is more the larval stage, the dispersal stage. But it does look a bit like a fish or a lamprey. Eh? So. Um, this is something that can swim around and disperse uh, the and these characteristics have just been retained and enhanced in uh, the adults of the fish and the like. So just in the ones that we are concerned with, the invertebrates, it's only the larval stage that exhibits these characteristics of the chordate. Um, so they broadcast spawn sperm, then the eggs are brooded, and then this tadpole-like larva swims around and then settles, finds a good tasting bottom that um, that tastes like uh, something that an ascidian would like to live in. Uh, the ascidians, okay, uh, which is another name for a court for a tunicate, or another name for the um, the ones that are benthic, the chordates that are benthic, they reproduce asexually by budding, just like we saw in hydroids and um, uh, sponges, they butt off and produce interconnected colonies. Okay, so here's what happens. 
the larval stage settles on the on the substrate and then morphs into this uh, adult. It loses its tail um, and the gill becomes this thing called a uh, a pharyngeal basket, uh, which we'll have a look at in a little bit more detail in a second. And it has two siphons where and the water comes in in one and out the other. So very much like a uh, bivalve. So we've got two classes to know. You'll be responsible for uh, Acidiacea and Thaliacea. Okay. The Acidiacea are the ones that are stuck to the ground, and the Thaliacea are the ones that are floating around in the in the water column. They're planktonic. Okay. So um, if we start thinking about the ones that are stuck to the ground, they have a tough, rubbery tunic that provides protection. That's why they're often called tunicates. All right, you'll see that when you're reading in science and uh, dive journals and things like that, dive magazines, you'll see tunicates, and that's what you're uh, what you're looking at. It's referring to the, the covering. Um, they are, can, or well, the tunic can be soft and gelatinous or tough and rubbery. Uh, it depends on the species. Like we said, there's the atrial siphon and the buccal siphon. If you remember buccal tentacles in the echinodermata, that and buccal refers to around the mouth. So the incurrent siphon, of course, is the buccal one where water's coming into the mouth. So here we go. Buccal siphon, water goes in. Atrial siphon, water goes out. Very much like a... Uh, like a like a bivalve. And I've got a link uh, to a YouTube video that you should uh, have a look at, which I'll provide on Moodle. Okay, so what happens? The water comes in, and very much like we saw in the bivalves, they have this ciliated gill, the cilia on the gill, and this this basket. It's instead of a gill, although this does act as a gill. Instead of um, this being sheets, it's sort of uh, like a like a gourd or something like that. Uh, it it is a tube, uh, it's cylindrical, and um, as the water passes through, the particles are strained out, and then they're taken down to the mouth, and they go through the digestive system, and then expelled out with the water cavity. And that's about really what they do for their whole life. They sit, they met, they, they settle, they metamorphose, and then they just filter feed uh, and try to hold on to their little spot on the reef. Okay, so here is another picture of the um, pharyngeal basket. And you can see all these little attachment points and the like to keep it spread open. But this is uh, the filtering mechanism. Right here is the intestine, okay, with di digested and digesting food in it. And that is right here, okay? So that will be expelled out the atrial siphon. Okay. Um, they can be solitary. They might be a single uh, individual zoid, which you remember. So they look, they can look something like this, all right, or one's up on a stalk, see tulips. And uh, incredibly, these ones, I'll show you, I'll link um, the video on YouTube. There are a few of them. There are some that are called gulpers that are actually kind of like Venus flytraps. Instead of filter feeding, they actually uh, gulp and capture prey. Okay, so they can be compound as well. So if they um, are compound, they'll share the tunic, but then have individual uh, openings, buccal and atrial siphons. All right, so here is a aggregated but solitary um, 
sea squirt, and this is a colonial one. All right, so you can see the in-current and ex-current siphons here. Well, these ones actually share an in-current siphon, or they share an ex-current siphon, but they have their own individual uh, in-current siphons. So what you'll see is a bunch of little holes ringing uh, a bigger hole in the middle. And that is uh, the key to diagnosing that it's not a sponge, but it, rather it's an colonial acidian. Here's a written statement of what we've just uh, talked about. Another image of a colonial acidian. You can see the um, shared atrial siphon and all the little buccal siphons around ringing those things okay look a little close up of another um a colonial ascidian and then we move to the next class thaliacea salps okay so these things are little transparent um individuals that live in the plankton you may have seen these we most likely have seen these washed up on the beach they can be super dense at certain times and you might have thought these things were like jellyfish eggs or fish eggs or something like that. Lots of people do, but because they've got these little dark patches in each of them, much like a yolk of an egg. But they aren't there. Um, each of these are attached little animals. Each one of these little things is its separate little animal. And they are uh, essentially like planktonic sea squirts. Okay, they have buccal and atrial siphons still, but they're at opposite ends of the body. There we go. You can see the um, buccal siphon here and the atrial siphon here. Uh, I think I have that right. And um, I don't know, I've got that backwards. Buccal, mouth, side, atrial. In any case, what happens is they can close uh, one off and then open the second and then re just change that and water will be sucked into one side and jetted out the other okay so they um, they sort of move through the water as with jet propulsion uh, filter feeding as they go and then you can see the pharyngeal basket here which is an excellent um, filter filtration device you can see all the little striations and they are very abundant in warm nutrient waters, but also super abundant in Antarctic water. So they're really worldwide, okay? And in places where krill has been fished heavily, then these things uh, are the fastest reproducers of any species, um, or any um, invertebrate that is known. And so they can replace krill, but they're not as good a food obviously they're not uh they don't take the place of krill as a food for things like penguins and whales and the like so they could be uh when we start fishing for the krill we can uh, change the dynamics of the ecosystem and we're just starting to understand that there all right so another link which i will give to you to show you them uh, swimming uh, i'll link to it in moodle here's another picture of what they look like when you're swimming around in the water column, or if you find them on your hand, uh, if you pick one up and you're surfing or something. And uh, here's another uh, kind of a crazy one, which is uh, known as a giant uh, salp. And these things, I'll put another link to those on the on YouTube as well. But um, this is a picture of somebody with their head inside a giant salp where. Uh, they actually all suck water in and from the outside and expel it out the back and the whole thing moves like a giant sock through the water in order 